Welcome back to the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com. I'm Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keelan's director of simulcasting. We're doing a, a second podcast this week on the fairgrounds races. Our first one focused exclusively on Gulfstream because it's such a, a great cards uh, that are featured on Saturday. Of course, the Cats are playing on Saturday afternoon as well. So if you're going to the game, don't forget, drive through wagering at Keeneland uh, or KeelanSelect.com to get your bets down. And if you don't have tickets... Then, Jim, the game will be on out at Keeneland while you can wager on the races too, right? Absolutely. You can wager on uh, on the races, watch the Cats play, and uh, it's a pretty exciting place to be. And the, and the racing is great on Saturday between the fairgrounds and Gulfstream's cards. Well, the Cats are playing LSU, and so we're going to take a look here at the races from New Orleans and the four graded stakes races on the fairgrounds card for Saturday. We'll start with the ninth race for three-year-old Phillies. It's the grade three Rachel Alexandra at a mile and a sixteenth, and I thought there were three horses. I couldn't find a whole lot of difference between uh, uh, Got Lucky, Streaming, Untappable. Uh, who did you land on here? Well, I had those three plus. I don't think you can take you can take out Rhea Antonia. I mean, she won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly last year, even yeah. though she got up on a on a disqualification, which was questionable. But I think you got to put her in there too. It, this is a great race for for just a seven horse field. I like Got Lucky. Uh, I, I went back and uh, we discussed in our earlier podcast at Gulfstream uh, the horses that came out of the Demoiselle at, at Aqueduct. And Got Lucky got it, came out of that same race, and she actually got a, tr- a r- rail ride, but she didn't get a fast pace to run at. So she closed into a 115 and 26 furlongs and just got beat by a neck, and she was a maiden then. They, they thought enough of her to, to run her in the grade two as a maiden. She came back at Gulfstream, caught a sloppy track, and won by five at two to five on January 29th. So Pletcher's got her going in the right direction. So she's going to be kind of, to me, the the unsung horse here because streaming comes out of a grade one, the Las Virginis, and uh, Rio Antonio was a Breeders' Cup winner. So I'm going to take got, got Lucky on top. Streaming is the one that's got all kinds of upside. I mean, she could be three for three right now very easily. She just barely got beat by fashion play out in California. And Rio Antonio is my third choice. Uh, Englehart's got to prove that it, it wasn't a fluke in the Breeders' Cup, and uh, she was thirty-two to one and blew up my pick four, if I remember correctly. So, <laughs> I'm gonna, anyway, I'm going to take Got Lucky. I'm going to go against Rio Antonio mainly because of of the layoff here, and I'm going to take a horse that I think is going to give me a real nice price in this spot, and that's Untappable. Uh, on her best day, I think she she can um, make a run at at the top spot here. I like the work pattern. Uh, Rosie Napravdik takes the mount and uh, streaming. I think takes the bulk of the money for Baffert got lucky probably uh, next or Rientona and, and tappable could kind of get lost on the board and float up to a real nice price. So I'm going to play untappable the four horse and uh, use her in exact as with got lucky and streaming maybe a little with Rientonia as well. Tenth race is the Grade Three Fairgrounds handicap on the turf at a mile and an eighth for four-year-olds and up. And you've got a couple of horses uh, in this race, uh, Mr. Mardi Gras Ground Transport, that uh, are also entered in the Mine Shaft handicap a little later on the card on the dirt. Um, so that uh, you know, we'll give you some names here, but just understand that uh, they, they're going to scratch out of one of those two spots. Who did you land on here in the Fairgrounds handicap? Yeah, they can't run back to back. You know, we have people at Keeneland sometimes think if a horse wins the first race, they can come back and run the second race, but they're not that tough. So, yeah, I, I'm going to think ground transport is probably going to go in the dirt race, and and I would think Mr. Mardi Gras fits either one. So I did pick Mr. Mardi Gras as third horse in the uh, in the fairgrounds handicap. Daddy knows best is so good right now. I mean, if you watch the last two races, he's he's become a a turf monster, and I uh, I really liked. I thought he was very it was tough to get up the last time on a very yielding fairgrounds turf course. Hopefully they'll get good weather and this will stay on the turf and it won't be, it won't be soft. I think daddy knows best is my best bet of the day down there. He loves fairgrounds. The long stretch suits his running style. There's plenty of speed in here to set it up for him. So I, I think he's, he's the best bet of the day. Joe Chalamo comes back to Louisiana. It's kind of a nice story where he started his career and then he went to California. He's been not dominating out there, but in the top five jockeys consistently. And he rides gentleman's kitten for for the Ramseys, and uh, if you go on the last race there, uh, Gentleman's Kitten fits very well here. Uh, moved to Maker Barn after Catalano, uh, Catalano got the best buyer he's ever run by 23 points, and then uh, Mr. Ramsey took horses away from Catalano, so Mike Maker's got it. If he moves him up a little bit, he's got a shot. And then Mr. Mardi Gras is my third choice here with uh, Bridge Mahan picking up the mount, moves him up a little bit too, and I do think he'll probably go in this spot. So 
Daddy Knows Best over Gentleman's Kitten and Mr. Mardi Gras for me. I am taking Gentleman's Kitten uh, to upset the favorite. I uh, like the way he uh, ran an improved race in the first start for the new barn, and he's worked well since then. And for the for the price, I'm going to give him a shot, take him to upset Daddy Knows Best, and then uh, Mr. Mardi Gras is my third one as well, and uh, Gentleman's Kitten, the key horse for me in the exotics. The uh, 11th race is the Derby Prep at the fairgrounds, the Grade 2 Risen Star Stakes for three-year-olds at a mile in the 16th. you got a Baffert shipper in here, a uh, Hopportunity that uh, comes off a maiden win and uh, has created a lot of buzz. I liked Bondholder, but then he had some physical issues and had to scratch. So I ended up on Gold Hawk. Um, Vickers in Trouble is probably going to be favored uh, over Hopportunity, but Vickers in Trouble got a horrible draw. And then Hopportunity is only coming off a maiden win. So with those knocks, I'm going to take a shot with Gold Hawk, who was favored last time when Vickers in Trouble beat him. And um, I think this horse has some ability. It's kind of steadily moved forward. I like the workout pattern. Uh, Asbusen doesn't work them fast. And uh, three horses had three works since that last start. And the first one was third fastest of 44. So a pretty sharp five furlong move. And then he got the typical slow half mile a few days out uh, for uh, an Asbusen trainee. So... I'm going to try Gold Hawk for an improved performance here at a price. And then uh, Opportunity and uh, Albano, the one horse for Larry Jones, and then uh, Vickers in Trouble. What about you? Well, it's funny. We just talked about top billing in our other podcast, drawing the 12 hole and the uh, Fountain of Youth. And yeah. The 14 hole, I read something in Daily Racing Forum this week. There's no statistics for the 14 hole at fairgrounds because i don't think they've ever had one they've never completely <laughs> filled a 14 horse field so vickers in trouble it's either gonna be 0 for one or one for one and, and he's good enough he can win for the 14 hole uh, the last two races he was he just t- toyed with his uh with his competition rosie fits him like a glove mike maker's a great trainer and ramsey may have a derby horse here i don't like the 14 hole so i also went with gold hawk and one thing you got to remember about Goldhawk, if you go back and look at the last race, he was favored against uh, Vickers in Trouble. He left his race at the starting gate. He didn't want to load. Yeah. And he, he was Good very point. stubborn. And, and if you go back and just watch that race from the beginning and, and you look at, at Goldhawk, he, he left it right there. He had no shot. So I think he tossed that race completely. Uh, you look at his first two races, and I think he's got a real shot here with much better post position than Vickers in trouble, and you're going to get a better price. Um, and I also like the Baffert horse to, to get a piece. Uh, otherwise, it's probably not as strong as the Fountain of Youth. Uh, the other horses not don't impress me that much. So I'm, I'm going to box those two. Maybe commanding curve for Dallas Stewart gets a piece from the outside with Alvarado. Twelfth race is the grade three mineshaft handicap. Four-year-olds and up at a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. And um... – it's a pretty well-matched group. Uh, how did you see it? I'm going to take a real flyer right here. I'm going I'm to take Eddie Keneally on Bradister. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, going back about, I, I love to take races. This horse has not been racing against that kind of company, and but he's had one race at Gulfstream where he did get a lot better. But if you go back to his Indiana Derby race uh, against Power Broker, he gets beat by a length and three-quarter in a grade two Um I just have a feeling Eddie Canale can get one ready off a layoff. Uh, Rosie the Provident takes the mount, uh, which is a plus. And I'm, I'm thinking this race is very well matched, and this might be a 7, 8, 10-to-1 shot. So I'm going to take Bradister. Uh, if he improves a little bit, last time he, he was off a layoff, he went from an 89 buyer to a 96 in his second back off a layoff. He goes from 93 to 100, he can win this race. So the other horses, for Dubai, Prayer for Relief, Grand Contender, I couldn't really separate them. So I think that's why I went to to an outsider. So I'm going to take Bradister. Can't knock that thinking. I ended up taking for Dubai, the 10 horse. I like the improvement in the first start as a four-year-old. Working well since then. Uh, Robbie Alvarado stays on for the ride. So um, for those reasons, I kind of landed on for Dubai, but... Um, I, I didn't have a strong opinion in this race. Uh, grand contender, uh, probably my second pick. Prayer for relief, third. And uh, the other one I had listed was Mr. Mardi Gras. But uh, if he doesn't go here, Bradister's certainly uh, one to take a long look at as well. But for Dubai is going to be the uh, the pick for me for the win and uh, for the key horse in exactas. Uh, great cards at Gulfstream and at Fairgrounds on Saturday. So enjoy the racing. Best of luck with your picks, and we'll see you next week on the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com.